if you don't know, he's a professional chef. I don't know, but he found time to be with us. Are you excited? I'm excited. Today, we are all talking about Thanksgiving, my favorite holiday of the year. And I'm gonna try to show you how to make it affordable and maybe a few splurges. And most importantly, this is gonna be delicious because that's why, you know, that's what Thanksgiving is about, really eating and being thankful and having our friends and family together. Uh, and if you are a new parent or mom, make sure you do this with your kids. They're gonna always remember it, okay? So, first thing I'm gonna tell you, if you are really hurting this year, and I know so many of us are, the best deal out there is the Ibotta app. If you haven't downloaded it, it's not a sponsored video, do it right now. You can get a free turkey breast, you can get a free thing of cranberry sauce, some gravy, you basically put together, oh, stuffing, you can put together like a small Thanksgiving meal, probably for a family of like four. It's not like the best one you've had in the entire world, but it's Thanksgiving dinner and it's free. Did you hear me? Free! So download the app. I looked at my local Walmart and they didn't have it. I was so sad. I was like, what? Because I was like, we're going to get it and we're going to drop it off our local food bank. So if you do have it and you're like, I don't need it, download the app. Go give it to someone that needs it. I know our church, our local food bank's looking for it. I know the main local food bank's looking for it. All the places, they need help this year. Okay? And so does everybody else. So if you have, you know, if you can afford it, then do it. Or if not, or if you can get your free turkey, do that. So I was going to tell you. We are lucky. We live by a Winco and they are giving you free targets with every hundred dollars. So you bet we're going shopping and we're taking you with me. Then if you live in the South and you're buying H-E-B, they have buy a turkey, get a ham. Do it. Put your ham in the freezer for Christmas. Cause if, unless you're having a big party, which we're not supposed to be having this year, then just save it for Christmas. Okay. And I thought about just doing a breast, but I didn't want that. I want leftovers because I was like, you know, a breast would feed the whole family. We don't want that. We want leftovers. And we have a lot of ideas for leftovers. If I had more time, I probably would have already made my special on what you do with leftovers. But I don't know if it's going to happen. We'll see. And then I'm going to take you to shopping. Oh, also Safeway and Albertsons has, if you spend $150, $150, a little bit more. So maybe you can add it to like two of your weeks of shopping or one week or however you work it. And they will give you also a free turkey. So I haven't looked across the whole United States. I know a lot of the stores are still offering the great deals this year, which is great. Um, and then I'm gonna show you what I would splurge on. Um, and you could splurge on all kinds of stuff, really your choice. Like if you're a drinker, maybe you need a mixed drink, or maybe you're into the whole crudite thing and like a cheese platter, because you need to eat all the stuff before the actual turkey, because you're not into the turkey. Whatever floats your food. Or maybe you're like me and you can't imagine Thanksgiving without a pecan pie or pumpkin pie. And I'm going to show you my pecan pie. And it is basically pecans. Do you know her, her pecan pie really is the best. See? You heard it right here. It's it's almost all, it's like four times the nuts that you would put in. Yes, so I would say this another, is a splurge. So it's because, very good. But I'm going to show you where I found pecans on sale and you will not believe the price. It's Costco. That's right. And I'm going to show you what I got them for. And if you're not a Costco member, you could so there's still prices to be had. Just look through a thing. And the most important thing is plan out what you want. Make your list. So I am going to put the chapters in here. We're going to take you shopping. I'm going to show you my rolls, my cornbread stuffing, my pecan pie, and the rolls are super cheap if, you know, I think part of the other thing about Thanksgiving is how much work are you willing to put in versus paying for it. If you buy rolls already made, of course, it's more expensive and they may not be as good. Or you can make them yourself cheaper, you know. It's also your choice of quality over quantity. Sometimes if you want a large volume of food, you can get that and that's good. And then there's other times where you go, I'm just going to pick one or two things. I want really good rolls and a really good turkey. Um, a really especially, good stuffing. Especially around this time when things are like they are, you know. Yeah, so you either... yeah. You got to decide which, or maybe you're a big drinker. That was everything else. I think you said that once before. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Some of my friends are. That's how they feel. Uh, or whatever it is. We don't actually drink, by the way, so we're not going to be saying it. But uh, yeah, I can't imagine my life become pie. And since I put in like... You'll see how much pecans. It's pretty much just pecans. It's kind of an splurge, I would say. And our cornbread dressing that we have perfected. We both worked really hard on it over the years. It was like a rendition of one recipe after another. And we're like, We've oh, tried them all. Right. this one's yeah. all right. And we together have worked on, on this one over the years. And we, we like it. We love it. We yeah. don't like it. It's, it's, we are, it's, 
It's really decadent. And at the end, Sean is going to tell us how to plan our meal because me, like every other woman. And I will also share with you my horrible first Thanksgiving with John. When I mean horrible, it, <laughs> really good job. She I'm did a, a bad really, cook. She did, <laughs> no, beginning. she did a really good job. I never it cooked with her. She was cooking for four chefs. She was very. We'll nervous. tell you the story. Yeah. Shh. Well, wait for the end to she find did, out what I did. She did a good job. <laughs> She did a good job. But we're going to get into, so we're going to take you shopping, share the recipes, and John's going to help us plan it and give us just, some pointers, make some it easier. Tricks. There's yes. some really good people out there in the world that if you ever look at on any social media app, there are people that are in my field that will beforehand say, here's a list of things that you can do to make your Thanksgiving easier on yourself. Uh, maybe I'll yeah. mention one so or two of them. So stay to the end so. for him and your funny story. Okay. Let's go shopping and see the deals. All right. Okay, you guys, here's what the Ibotta app is giving out. It's very simple to use. You download the app to your phone, you click on what you want, then you scan your receipt, and then at the end, after you collect at least $20, then it gives you your money back in the form of a gift card, or I think you can actually get put back in your account. I'm not sure, I've only done gift cards. Or if you live by Safeway or Albertson, you spend $150 and you can get a turkey free. It's one of the deals. Or if you live near a Kroger, they are doing the same thing, $150, and you get a free turkey. If you're lucky and you live next to Winco, you only have to spend $100, and that's where I bought mine. And you guys, these are like 24, 23 pound turkeys. I think it's a great deal. As you can imagine, I looked through them and I got me a 24 pound turkey. Okay, or if you live in the South and you live near an H-E-B, you can buy a turkey and get a ham. Or if you live next to a high V, same thing. Well, it's buy ham, get a turkey. And I know you're thinking, what am I going to do with it? Well, maybe this next month I will teach you how to make my famous ham that everybody in my house loves. I wanted to show you some prices. If you're at Trader Joe's, you want to make my rolls, you want my buy gigantic thing, maybe just pick up a small little pack of yeast to make these rolls. They had a great deal. Here's Costco, two pounds of pecans for $9. It's four fifty a pound. You cannot get better than that. Or here is my favorite turkey brine. If you're going to buy everything instead of buying all the components, you can pick it up at your local Costco. It has really everything you need. It has directions on how to do it. We usually do this one or we kind of follow my husband's normal Brian, if I can find it online, it's been on TV a million times. I'll try to link one of the old videos of him teaching you how. But I do really love this Brian. It has everything you need in it. wanted to show you this stuffing when I was at um, Winco. I love it because you can make it in your crock pot and it actually turns out incredible. If you do not have an oven room, this is what I would suggest you would buy. I also wanted to um, just show you it. I mean, and you really, it is still like you make fresh. It has, you just add in your celery and your onions. It is really good. I have actually used it when I make um, chicken sometimes because my kids really actually enjoy eating it year round. It tastes really good. And I'm telling you, in your crock pot, if you do not have enough room in your oven, no one will know. It is really good. Just wanna let you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money on your side. You could just do, corn and peas if you really are on a tight tight budget and also if you don't want to make your pie crust then buy them it actually probably would be cheaper but you can always make your pie crust or you can make them ahead of time and put them in your freezer and bring them out when you're ready to make your pies um they do i mean all of the um i was going to show you the peas so i just did corn and peas and that's what we're going to have as our sides to also even out some of the other stuff we're having and cranberries i'm going to show you they are really uh, really affordable if you want to just make your own cranberry sauce or also celery is also on sale this time of year just make your list be organized and this really should not have to cost you a fortune this year Another option would be to buy one of your pies and make one of your pies if you really are still getting, having a big get together. Okay, let's get going on my famous, famous rolls. And you guys, this is gonna come together so quickly, you will be like, why would I ever buy them again? You're gonna start out with about one cup of water and two tablespoons of yeast. I know, it's quite a bit of yeast for just a small amount of rolls, but this is how you can make these in under 30 minutes. And that's what I should've told you a second ago is that's what makes these so incredible. And then you're also gonna add in one fourth a cup of sugar, which is, these are a little slightly sweet. And then we're gonna do one third of a cup of oil. 
and then you are just going to mix this up. You are going to need to make this in a mixer that has a dough hook, so like a KitchenAid or you know something else. Uh, I guess you could probably do it partially by hand, but it'd be easier if you had a stand mixer. So just give it a good whirl, and then you're just going to let it sit and wait till this happens until it starts bubbling. It's only going to take actually about five to eight minutes for this to happen because we have all the yeast in, and you're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt and then one egg and then we are just going to turn back on our mixer and beat it all together and just let it get all mixed together and then we are going to start adding our flour we're going to start by adding just two cups at a time because if not this flour is going to fly everywhere i actually think i did that's why i had to put my hand over so it wouldn't like Bounce over. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Put too much flour at one time, turn your mixer and it flies everywhere. In a second, I quickly realize, hello, I have in the wrong hook. In a second, now to switch it out. I decided to go ahead and put in, I think, my third cup. We're actually going to be adding in four cups of flour. Here's my third cup, and then I realize, oh no, I forgot to. So, after you had mixed it, the solution together of the yeast and the oil and the eggs and everything that's when you should have switched your dough hook before you started adding in uh, your flour i was not paying attention that night i was watching movie at the same time i was making this <laughs> so you add in your dough hook and then we are going to mix it all together and then i added in your last cup of flour so that is four cups of flour in total and it is still gonna feel um like it is too like sticky doughy but that is how this dough feels okay it's not going to feel like a dry dough like when you pull it out to knead it on your counter so you're just going to spray i think this is about a 12 inch baking dish and spray it down with some spray so you can easily get it out think about this because it is so sticky you need to put some oil or spray on your hands so that you can get it out easily and i probably should have put a little bit of flour or spray on my counter i didn't again I'm paying attention. I'm trying to do too many things that night all at one time. So you want to do constantly spray your hands or anything that is with this dough because like I said, it is super sticky. I am taking my dough scraper and I'm just going to use it to try to cut my dough into little pieces. I picked up a Dollar Tree. I love this one. And the thing is, like I said, it's super sticky. So you need to use your oil. I guess you could have used some just regular oil and put a little bit more on to cut it into about 12 um, little rolls that you think. This wasn't a great job on my part as far as making them equal. So I kind of made them into balls and then I kind of was like, okay, some of these are too big and some of these are too small. I probably should have done a better job of cutting them better to begin with, but that's just how it goes. So I am going to let the, uh, make all the doughs, all the dough balls, and then when we are done, we are going to just leave it in a warm place or doesn't really necessarily mean to be that warm. Just leave it on your stove, your kitchen, whatever. They need to sit for about 10 minutes just so they can start rising. There you go. We got them all and I tried to make them all even. We're putting them into the oven for 400 degree at 400 degrees. And I have them all even. They sat out for about 10 minutes, shoving them into the oven. These take about 10 to 14 minutes to cook, depending on your oven, depending on how brown you want them. I probably should have gone a little bit longer. That's my sign for 10. And so I only have to remember, to show you guys, it's about 10 minutes. I think mine probably took about 12 minutes to cook. And there they are, all golden brown. Now let's get started on this yummy cranberry sauce that I make every year. And I'm not sure why people buy it in a can. I think it's just with whatever you grew up eating. Okay, we're kind of making a double recipe. So we are going to start out with two cups of water, and then we are going to be adding in two cups of sugar. And then we are going to be using some, oh, we're gonna, sorry. We're gonna mix it around and let it melt just a little bit. Then we're getting our orange juice, and we're using about a half of a container. And this is gonna make it just taste so much better. I don't know if you guys ever tried it with orange juice, but it's so much better than just using plain water. And then we are taking a zest of an orange. I don't even know how much to say how much I use. I use just some. I don't know until it tastes good to you. So we're 
Then we're going to be adding in our fresh cranberries and I actually added in six cups of fresh cranberries. And then you are going to start, let it come to like a, I guess you would say a simmer, a low boil. And we are just going to let them cook for about 10 minutes until they pop. You're gonna hear them popping too. And it's gonna look like this, kind of just exploded. Then you are gonna put them into a vessel, put them into the refrigerator, and let it cool, and that's when it will start thickening. Okay, for the delicious plum kai, we are doing three tablespoons of butter and one cup of sugar, and we are just going to mix it around in our bowl and get it all beaten together. And then, now some people use dark corn syrup, and this is where mine is different. I always use light. I think it tastes better. I think it looks better. It just has a better flavor. I usually do use the spray inside the the um, the the cup holder so that it doesn't stick to it. And that was a half a cup of light corn syrup. And then we are taking three eggs and we are going to pre-beat them together before we actually put them into our bowl. And then we are going to do two tablespoons of some good vanilla and just mix it all together. And then we are going to add in our corn syrup to it, or half a cup, and then a lot of people only put one to two cups of pecans, but I actually do four whole cups of pecans. Now you are gonna need a deep dish pie dish to make this. And if you don't, if you wanna make your own um, pie crust, you can, or if you wanna buy one, that night I didn't have time, so I had bought one. But if you want to learn how to make a pie crust, make sure you check out my apple pie video and I teach you actually how to do that. So now we are going to take that pecan pie and throw it into the oven at 375 for about 10 minutes only. Then after 10 minutes are done, we are going to drop the temperature to, for, to 350 for about 25 minutes or until it's done. It's gonna look kind of bubbly. I just wanna show you this. Also, when you shake it, it should not shake in the middle. If it shakes in the middle, it's not set, and it's not ready, and go a few more minutes, and it should look like this on the top. And that is how you will know it is done. I think you guys need to give this pecan pie a try. If you guys haven't had pecan pie, you normally don't eat it. Look at all those nice, big pecans, you guys. This is so good. The night I made it, my daughter had four slices and oh my gosh, she's like, when are we going to have another one? I was like, you have to wait for real Thanksgiving, not just for my video. She's like, oh, I want another one. So maybe she'll watch this and try to make one herself. So there you go. My pecan pie. I hope you guys give it a try. Okay. Now we're on to our cornbread. The night before I just used some Jiffy Mix, two of them to make about, I think it's like an eight by four, eight by eight um, square um, cornbread. You do need to make this the night before because it needs to dry out. You cannot do it on the day that you are going to be making your stuffing. So you're gonna need to make this probably at least two days before Thanksgiving. And then we use sourdough bread, and that's what also makes ours different. We use nine slices of sourdough bread, and we just wanna cut it up into little cubes so that they're kind of like all even. That's why my husband helped me make this, because I can't cut even, I think we know that. And I put them into little cubes, and then we're putting them on two different um, baking dishes. And now what we're gonna need to do is actually dry these out. So we're putting our oven on 350 and throwing it in there and because we need he's saying you could leave it open or you could close it we just threw them in there left them in there so they could dry out now here we're going we're gonna need about one pound of sausage and about that was a 12 ounce container of bacon um the one i usually buy from Trader joe's uncured bacon and we're just cutting up you could use a little less bacon this is kind of a really I don't know, indulgent kind of stuffing. It's not the best for you, but it tastes delicious. So we are taking our bacon and we're just gonna cook it up and get it crispy. That's what we're looking for. At the same time, we are taking four stalks of celery and cutting it up. Remember, all the recipes will be in the description box, just in case. You could also, by the way, we always make our stuffing and we need one onion before I forget ahead of time. And what we did actually on this night, we left one out and we ate it and then we put one 
into our freezer and we're just gonna reheat it on the day of Thanksgiving. Okay, and here's our eggs. We're actually taking two eggs and my husband's just gonna beat them up. So here's our bacon. You wanna get it to the point of it kind of getting crispy because if not, it's gonna be kind of bleh in your stuffing. So you wanna get it crispy. I just wanna show you, it needs to be crispy. And then once it is totally crispy, we are gonna take it out and then start on our sausage. We did not take the fat out. Then we are cutting up our sausage and taking it out and we are going to be placing them in a bowl together. And then to the fat that's still left, like I said, it's kind of indulgent, we're taking our celery and onion in there and we are just gonna cook it just a little bit, just to cook it into the fat, get the flavor and cook just a drop, not too much. We don't want it soggy. Then we are going to get sage and we have a garden and believe it or not, our sage is still alive. You know, it's gotten frozen once or twice already. And you're gonna need about a tablespoon of fresh sage. sage. You just want to cut it up into small pieces, uh, just like that. Because <laughs> we can all do that, right? Anyways, and if not, you don't have fresh, get the rubbed sage at the grocery store is what you need. Then you need some poultry seasoning and white pepper. There's the red sage if you don't know what it looks like. And then we are also going to be cutting up some fresh flat leaf parsley. And I think we need about a cup. I mean, he uses um, just like one head of a flat leaf parsley. I know we're bad because we just cook. We don't always measure everything out because we've done like we cook all the time together. Okay. And so he wanted to tell you that you wanna make sure that when you're about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes in, you need to turn them so that they get dry on all sides. Then we're gonna spray two dishes because you also don't want your stuffing to be so thick that it can't cook like through and it'll just be a soggy mess. Because remember, we're adding in chicken broth and eggs and everything else and we need to actually cook it. So here's our eggs. He wants to let you know that you, he adds in the broth to kind of thin out so it's not just like eggs in one spot. We want it to put it all the way through. So we're gonna add about a teaspoon of white pepper and about a teaspoon of um, poultry seasoning. And then we're gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. Again, we didn't quite measure, I just threw some in. So you can do it to your taste. Then you're gonna put them into your baking vessels. And then we are going to kind of make sure they're both about even and you don't want them too high. You want to show you that you could put foil over them at this point and throw it in your freezer if you wanted. We put it at 325 for about 25 minutes and there it is all done. Oh, you guys give this a try. You are going to love it. Thanks for staying till the end. I hope that you try one of these recipes and you get a good great deal at the store because I know we all need a great deal right now or maybe get the free one with Ibotta. But we're here at the end and we're here with my husband, John. Yay! And so he's gonna give us a little pointers and then I'm gonna tell you my fun story. It's not fun, it wasn't fun at the time. <laughs> it's funny now. Okay, John, well, what are some pointers for you as, let's say you're a new cook, you know, or you haven't cooked for, Maybe you just got married or whatever, you know. Oh, geez, overwhelming situations. <laughs> well, that's breathe, what it is. Breathe, and a lot of things are planning in reverse. I think yes. that is figuring out what time everybody's going to be there. And sometimes it's nice to build in buffers. So if you had something like a, a, a crudite or vegetable platter or cheese platter that you build ahead of time, and you have out just in case you're running behind, that's one thing. Oh yes, that's a great idea because you think you're gonna be ready and then you're not ready. And then one other thing is to back out, we, we call them railroad schedules because if you think of a, a, a subway system or a railroad, they have stops along the way and they have to get to a certain point at a certain time. So let's say that you wanna have dinner at 5 p.m. You would start there and then you would back times out to say, I need to have stuff done. Most people want their meal hot. That, I think that's hard when you're first starting because you don't know like, what time do I put in my rolls? What time do I, if you want them hot and ready and you're stuffing and then you're running out of uh, oven room that's, and then you're panicking or then you forget about, you're doing something last minute and then before you know it, you have something on fire. 
<laughs> which has happened, does happen. But And you know what's hard is everybody thinks, oh, your husband's home all the time. He cooks you for Thanksgiving. That's not always true. When we lived in Texas, he was never home on Thanksgiving. I had it all done with family coming over. I, I've been he just very, showed up to very eat. blessed that I've been able to spend a lot of time with my family at different times. But at the, that time, there were a lot of holidays. Chefs trade a yeah, lot of holidays. Yeah, you know how so. you go to those nice Thanksgiving, uh, what are they, ballroom yeah. things? Yeah. yeah. Somebody but, has to be there. But now here, I've I've really been blessed with having different. This year that we're not going to be so. home, but we're uh, going to figure it out. So. But you back them out, so you would you would first navigate what your kitchen's like. Everybody's kitchen's different. You might not have a big oven. You might have uh, not a big range with lots of burners. So you have to say, well, what can I do? Uh, it, whether you have, you know, one year we made uh, stuffing in a crock pot. Uh, yes. That was one thing. Or what you, are some things that they can make way ahead of time? Well, like, or the day before, the two days before, what the, would you tell them? The first thing I would do is figure out what vessels you want to serve in. Yes, don't be me and wait, because then you're like, oh my God, I don't have enough platters. Or what, especially if you're in like a newlywed, of course, now I have to wait. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's like, we got to get rid of some of this stuff. But here's one of the things you can do is, because you might use the same pan over and over again. So like our, we made cornbread stuffing, we baked the cornbread in advance, we diced it all up uh, to make the stuffing later, days in advance that pan's washed we can use it for something else later so right that's why you do that so, so one of the things that you can do is you take all of the different platters that things are going to be in and you put post-it notes or just a piece of paper that just says green beans in this turkey on this gravy in this and then you look at the actual serving utensils if you're going to have people over and then you figure out what things you can do as sonia said in advance so let's say that you uh, made stuffing, you could actually get it all the way to the point of putting it in the oven. And then if you wrap it with saran wrap or, or uh, plastic wrap, cling filled, and then aluminum foil, I'm dating myself with saran wrap because I guess sometimes people are like, uh, they don't know certain brands, but. Uh, okay. uh, it's, it's like when I say go Xerox this, people look at me like, what is Xerox? Because there's not... Zeros. I think everybody knows, anyway, but okay. No, some people don't. Right. So anyway, uh, that's one thing that you could do in, in advance. Uh, obviously, brining the turkey, you would do that a couple days in advance. Yes, um, and you have to de-thaw your turkey. Yeah, you have to And you know what else we've done with our turkey? Is either put a garbage bag in our cooler to brine it, because then you don't have to just throw out the garbage bag when you're done, because when you're brining it, it takes so long, which I am going to show you in the video. Uh, I showed you my favorite brine at Costco, but if not, Alton Brown has a really good brine that we've used in the past. It's also good. And a turkey procedure. And does. John has a video. If I can find <laughs> it, I will link it down below. It's pretty old. but <laughs> It's funny. But yeah. I, we have a brining video. He can so show you his brine. When, when she's saying about brining, the, what, what you can get is a, a cooler, because you need to keep it out of the temp temperature danger zone or yes. you you take a bucket like a five gallon bucket that's we've clean. done this when you we put here. a big heavy duty trash bag in it and open it and then you pour your whole chilled brine in that trash bag put your turkey in so on the day when you pull your turkey out you just tie up the trash bag with the brine and you can poke a hole in it over a sink and drain all yes. of it out and then throw it in the trash but then your cleanup is done so yeah, it makes clean... it so much easier. And we happen to have like just a small little fridge outside for our sodas and stuff. And that's what we stuck our Turkey. five gallon bucket in because you have to keep it cold. That's what I'm saying. Also like a big like soda cooler. Yeah. We've done that one year where we just... I think we just put it in the garbage bag and then put it in the thing. But and brining your turkey makes a difference. Thawing it out, that's that's so there's only certain ways to thaw it out. So you thaw it out either Sorry, Tony's uh, lights. The best way is to put it in the refrigerator in advance and let it let it uh, let it Texas slowly behave and it slowly thaw out. Or the other way is to uh, put it in cold running water, keeping the running stream going very uh, all the time, but low. That's called force thawing, which is, uh, but you, you don't want to leave a turkey out. You don't want to, it, it can have, because it's poultry, bacteria can form and stuff, all yeah. non-fun stuff. And that little bag that's in there is not stuffing. I had somebody ask me one time, well, isn't that the stuffing? Is you want to know bag? who gets a million texts on Thanksgiving? This guy. And the night before. I'm in a bind. Or, oh, is that stuffing inside my uh, turkey? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> You're like, 
Those are the organs. You want to take that and the neck out. Sorry. You How can you use think? them for different things. But... Yes, but that's not <laughs> it. All right. Um, and what else was I going to say? You can make cranberry sauce ahead of time for sure. I always yep. do. You should always make your pies at least the day before. Um, what else can you make before? Your gravy. I yeah, mean, you, you can, can make, kind so you can of, make your just... gravy in advance and heat it if you aren't making it from the turkey you're making it from. Yeah. You can obviously drippings. prep your turkey. You can peel all of the potatoes for the mashed potatoes yes. and put them in the in the cold water ahead of time. There, are, all these steps save and and you need oven management of which if you're gonna pull this, you only have a couple racks in your oven. Okay, this goes in and this comes out at what time so that it's done in time and what things have a similar temperature on the oven. So if everything's at 350 or everything's at 425, what you're gonna do? Yes. So. Um. Yeah. And I'll try to. Uh, Yes, I was, should have done more videos if I could have done a turkey. Maybe next year we'll do a turkey. So if you have any other questions for us about yeah, Thanksgiving, put it, put or it down. Or if you want us to go live the night before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I thought about going live. I can't do it on Thanksgiving because only working. me, because he's no. working, and I'll be cooking myself. I mean, I could. I mean, yeah, that might you be can. fun. That would be fun. But ask if you have any questions down below. Uh, about Thanksgiving or have any questions about certain ways of doing things. So uh, I'll paint a picture. So we're, oh, we're, yeah. we're Let's dating. Oh yeah, part. We're dating. Uh, you know, so, I, and I originally told her that, oh, I'm a, you know, I, I, I cook a little or do something. I think I told you I wash dishes. And then, I, so then, so then I, That was way before Thanksgiving. So we go, Thanksgiving comes around and none of us were chefs and we're all from different areas. And, and they were young. Yeah. They and, didn't have any family so or this anything. So 20 plus years ago. And I so. went out to eat with my grandparents first because they always wanted to go to those so hotel she, things. She invited us to come have Thanksgiving dinner. And we were like, well, after we put out I thought lunch, it would be a great gesture. Remember, and, we're and, dating. And it was. We were all, we all had worked all day long serving hundreds of turkeys to thousands of people doing this whole, the, all these things for, for Thanksgiving. And I thought I would cook my first day, turkey and my first pies and, and she worked this really is hard pre-youtube yeah pre like i think it's crazy phone, food there, network there just were no started. smartphones there, there was no, no I had like, like looking it up i had like just a very few this was when you had a, a cookbook and my mother never cooked thanksgiving meal we always ate out as a family and i promised myself once i had my own family that i would never do that because i think it's so impersonal and uh just it bothers me that people eat out. Anyways, I think you should eat at dinner, have your friends and family help you cook and play games. That's my idea of Thanksgiving. So I thought I would cook them a meal. I thought my turkey was done. I thought she did great. I just she thought just, I did good. She got very upset with herself and thought everybody, everybody I, else is very okay, patient. Okay, I read the directions on the package and it said that, that when the little thing little well, pops up on your turkey that it'd be ready so oh I was like so, oh it popped up it's ready that's only about an inch and a half into the turkey and it's like basically a piece of plastic that when it gets hot enough it it breaks and it pops up it doesn't mean that the turkey's done at it's it's actually I would say don't rely on those things as the story goes so yes. there's four of us, five of us it chefs was a lot. It showed was... up and and oh, her I and remember at Should her be... apartment uh, yeah, there's, so there's one, two, three, four, five of us. And, Crazy. And, and so she cooked for us, and we go, and we sit down, and we notice, or I notice, <laughs> this turkey is raw. This turkey is, is like, still, I didn't know, and I didn't have, by the way, still, you should buy one of those thermometers if you can. We have one that's like on outside, and then you put it into your turkey. Yeah, and you should beats. just put it in on the inside uh, of the thigh bone. Yes. And that's where you should temp a turkey because and a chicken. that a temp a, a turkey or a chicken. Sorry, sorry, my dog is I'm throwing the ball back and forth. Uh, that's that's how you temp it is on the inside bone of the inside of the muscle on the thigh bone of the turkey or the chicken. And it needs to be at least. Well, 165 is out of the, but you typically pull it at 160 and let it carry over cook so that it would, the residual heat inside brings it further so that it still stays moist. But this was raw. This one's still gobbling. It was bad. You know, it was, you know, and also so, my pie crust was also raw. But we fixed it and we didn't care. We fixed care. it all. They didn't Let's, care. They were just happy that they had to go to someone's, sorry. So all we did was we, I quickly butchered it, took all the meat off the bones and then seared all the medallions of, of turkey 
Everybody was still excited. Everybody still got to sit together and be thankful. So my point is, no matter how your Thanksgiving, if you put in effort, everybody will appreciate it and they will love to spend time with you. That's right. And that's what we want to say and leave our video with is we hope that all of you all have a great Thanksgiving yeah. great time with your family and friends. I know we're all very thankful this year to have that and uh, make sure if you can to help lighten up someone else's Thanksgiving. Maybe consider giving a turkey or giving a house. Um, think about there's just so many organizations, you know, that need help or, you know, one of my favorite charities, Ronald McDonald House, all those parents are seeing there, donate a meal to them. Okay, so. Both of our dogs want to tell you, for all of those that we can't be with you this year. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, and that's her, oh. Happy. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay, see y'all next time. We love you. Bye. Bye.